just don't give up Just don't give up, just don't give up Hey guys, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Acoustic Silk Show. We have a very special guest with us. He goes by the name of Blake Sean. How you doing, Blake? Good. So, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I know you're a friend of the channel. We've uploaded a number of your songs, um, and you know, thank you so much for joining us today. So, for those that don't know about you, could you go ahead and like show, share a little bit about yourself? Uh, well, I go by the name Blake Sean. I'm 18. I, uh, I rap and I'm from Tempe, Arizona. Uh, got my start on SoundCloud. Mm -hmm. Pretty much it. All right. Excellent. So I know you, I know you rap. I know you dabble in other genres as well. Yeah. Um, what, what kind of music would you say classifies you the best? Uh, right now I'm trying to do more like R and B sort of, I mean, I don't know if you would call it R and B, uh -huh. but sort of like a fusion between rap and R and B with some trap mixed in. Yeah. Okay. What's really got you interested in, in that going that route? Uh, really just like the music I listen to. And then I finally got a software where like I can actually like be using auto tune and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it has all the stuff I need to produce that type of music. So, okay, really, really that mainly. Okay, so you got some new equipment that has elevated your game, giving you more opportunities, and yeah. things like that. Um, so, what what equipment were you using before? Like, what software were you using before, and what are you using now? Uh, so I had Mixcraft uh, six, I think. Yeah, it was six, and now I I'm on eight. So I got eight like back in December. And uh, December of 2016. Okay. And since then, I've been kind of like doing different stuff a little bit. Okay. All right. Excellent. Yeah, man. Your music always does really well on the channel, which is awesome. Yeah, I was. Si it's crazy because it, it does better on your channel than it does on mine. Yeah. So, like I go and look, and some of the views are like up there. Yeah, you got like a couple hundred views on a number of the songs, like. I typically use a hundred as a good barometer of how a song does. So if you get a hundred views on the channel, that's pretty good. And a lot yeah, of your stuff has way more than a hundred views. So the, which is crazy because this is like my worst song on your channel. But on my <laughs> own, hit like a thousand, which is yeah, which is cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I saw that. It's awesome, man. So yeah, I guess the listeners really dig your stuff. So I'm glad that uh, you know things seem to be going well on the channel. Um. As far as, well, speak, speaking of channels, as far as like promotion and things like that, I know you've done a really good job using like Twitter, uh, SoundCloud, yeah. uh, YouTube. Like what's really your strategy there with like getting your music out there, especially for a uh, lot of people that listen to this channel and watch these interviews. They're interested in like becoming better at like the promotion angle and like putting their stuff really out there. So what's really the, your secret sauce that you've got going on there? Uh, I have, I mean, I haven't really gotten it completely down yet because I haven't quite made like a, I don't have a real following yet. Like in a way, like I mainly, I'll do some like paid promotion on SoundCloud, like pay for reposts and stuff. That's, mm -hmm. that definitely, that's a great way to really get your, get your plays up. And then as far as like Twitter, I'm kind of just on there following other musicians and networking. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Instagram. And then Facebook, it's pretty much like my friends and family on there. But um, mainly networking and every once in a while, you know, buying promotion from bigger bigger uh, artists and stuff like that. Like, Or like there's a bunch of repost networks on SoundCloud that'll really like, that's how a lot of my songs have been doing so well because uh -huh. I use those. Okay, so how how do those typically work? Uh, it well, it depends. It depends. Like, there's different networks. So there's this one network I use. It's like, I think it's called like Loud Vitamins or something, uh -huh. something weird like that. And um, it's like fifteen a repost. And then for their bigger channels, like with hundreds of thousands of listeners, you pay like fifty to sixty a song. So it it gets pricey, but like. It, I think it's worth it. I mean, for what I think Death Star hit like it's like close to forty thousand at this point, and that's oh wow, that's a lot of 
that and that you see results from. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Um, yeah, I think, okay, that's a pretty good model. Um, I know for myself, I don't think I'm saying this now, but my, my goal is never to charge the artist. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't believe in charging the artist. Well, I think you definitely could. I mean, with the amount of subscribers you have, there would be people willing to pay for that service for sure. I agree. Um, I mean, I, I know it would just, it would really depend. Like I paid to be on one account that had like, I think it's like 200,000 subscribers and that helps me out a lot on YouTube. Yeah. So I'm, I'm getting close to like a thousand subscribers at this point from yeah. pretty much just that. Yeah. Um, how much did they charge? Uh, I believe it was 40 bucks, but other, other channels at that like size probably charge more. Yeah. I think just cause they're not, they don't have the best engagement. It's like a thousand to 2000 views, which is good. But like other channels of that size would have more engagement. Oh yeah. Way more engagement. Way yeah. not even close. If they have 200,000 subscribers. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So yeah. That's that's fair then, um, yeah. I don't know what it is. I just don't. I just don't like the idea of charging the artist because I mean, most most artists are like trying to get by. They're you know they're hustling. They're working like multiple jobs. You know they're maybe yeah. buying studio time on the side or you know they're just you know working in their like basement or something like that. And I don't yeah, think I, I, don't, I, I don't think it's really fair to charge the artist. So I try and steer away from that. Um, as much as possible, but I do see like where it is a model that people, people have. And yeah, I think just, just depending, like, I think it's awesome that you don't charge the artists. Cause a lot of artists are like, I mean, that's, that's the difference. Some artists on SoundCloud just don't have the money. They could be just as good as any other artist. It's right. just, they don't have the money to put towards it. Right. Right. Hang on. My cat is like right next to the computer. I'm sorry. It's all good. <laughs> Um, all right, cool. So you've been doing some, uh, pay promotion and then just obviously like organic reach that you normally do. Yeah. And then, uh, through acoustic silk, obviously, man. And yeah, I that's actually, I think your channel, all things considered is probably helped the most. Okay. At least on YouTube for sure. Okay. That's good. I mean, all of my traffic is organic. Uh, I don't do any pay promotion for acoustic silk yet. I probably will in the future. Um, but Everything up until this point has been all organic. Um, so, I, and I like that because when you what you see is what you're getting with the numbers. Yeah. Right. So there's no like I didn't put like a hundred bucks into like an ad and you know you you see like a video with like ten thousand views or something like that. That's all yeah. organic traffic. What you see is what you get, and I feel like that really helps the artist know like okay it's really resonating with this group or it's really doing well over here or people are really vibing with it. So I think, I think, um, really that's like what I took most from your channel was like, if a song compared to like, if I look at all the songs I have through your channel, like if it's doing, I can see if it's doing well or if it's not like, and then I, I pretty much know if that's like, that was a good song or that's not the best or right. Yeah. All right. Good. So yeah, I'm glad, helps. I'm glad you appreciate that. Cause Sometimes, I mean, you obviously on YouTube, a lot of people listen, but you don't always get the comments and the feedback. Yeah. Um, so it's nice to hear that feedback from you. Um, so, yeah, last time we spoke, I think it was definitely 2017. Uh, it was probably like summer. It has it been, like, has it been around a year? It was like July. It's been like close to a year. It's been close to a year. Okay. It's been close. Yeah. So what, so what have you been working on since then? I think last time you were thinking about an EP or something like that. Yeah, so since then I've put out I put out another mixtape that was like I think 14 songs long. And then I didn't like a four song EP. Okay. And right now I'm working on cuz I just got signed, so right now I'm working right. on the album. So that I mean, hopefully I'll have that done by either late summer or early. It'll be done before summer, I think. But I don't know if I'm gonna drop it until like late summer, or early fall, somewhere in there. Okay. All right. So, uh, congratulations on getting signed. Thank you. Um, I'm sure that was, you know, a lot of hard work going into that process. Um, so, tell us a little bit about that. How did how did that come about? How did the opportunity come about? 
so well it's kind of it's kind of a weird story now so there's a local artist that at the time i was friends with there, there's some issues now yeah but um so he was i don't know if you've heard you've heard of tux god no he's i mean he's pretty popular locally so i saw he was signed to that label and we were talking a little bit and so i just decided to message the label and just see like I, I mean, I didn't, I don't want to say I'd ask them to sign me, but I basically did. Uh huh. And so, um, we just, we talked a lot and they, they, I guess they liked my story and everything. And so, um, we worked that out and it worked pretty well. Okay. So this is, I your... just, I Go... just hit them up on like Instagram. Okay. So this will be your first uh, project through that label. The first time working with them on a major project. Yeah. Okay. So is this like a one-time thing or is this going to be like a few, you're going to be doing this a few times or how's that going to go? So it was, um, it was a record deal. So it's one album. It's one project. Okay. So what, so what are you going to be looking for from that to see if you continue your relationship with them? Um, I think really just to see how, how it does. Like not, I mean... Not necessarily how the album's like perceived, because that's my own thing, because I still have my creative freedom and everything. Right. But just seeing that it gets a decent amount of traction. Okay. So I I don't know, like I want to see it do well on Spotify and all of that, and do okay on YouTube and stuff. Just I don't know, a couple thousand streams per song. Okay. Something like that. All right. So you're hoping it'll give you like kind of a boost. Yeah, um, I'm hoping this will be the one project that really like, because I've had like little like songs kind of blow up a little bit, but I'm hoping this is just like, I don't know, there's like a consistent, consistent numbers across the entire album. Okay. All right. And then you'll kind of take that data, look at it, and then see what's going to happen for the next project. Yeah. And I don't, I mean, I don't know if, at the moment it's just a one album thing so they can i guess after that they can decide if they want to try to sign me longer or something like that and then we'll have a conversation about that okay so are you are you going to be featuring any of the uh, other artists on the label or are you going to be working with any um, of them i think right now i have actually the i guess you would call him the founder of the label uh huh I'm pretty sure he's getting on a song. Um, I don't. I don't know if it'll go on the album or not because I'm not. I don't think my performance on it was that great. It's kind of a throwaway. Yeah. But I'll probably drop it for sure. Okay. You'll probably throw it on SoundCloud or something. Yeah, SoundCloud and YouTube probably. Okay. <coughs> Bless you. All right. That's that sounds good, man. So you, you're signed a deal. Now, did you ever imagine yourself being signed to a label? Like, what's what's in the plans for the future? Uh, I mean, I kind of had the mentality of, like, I'm not going to sign. Right. Because I always thought I'd just get, like, screwed over or something. Right. But, I mean, like, we talked about it, and the whole deal, it seemed good. I had um my uncle go over it. He's a lawyer. And then I had, he had his friend go over it, too, who's, like, a copyright lawyer. Oh, perfect. So everything everything looked good. Okay. And so, I mean, but I didn't really imagine that I would sign this early, for sure. Okay. Yeah. I know in the past, people would sign deals for like five, six, seven albums. Um, so in that sense, they'd be getting screwed over. Uh, yeah, because, I mean... You know, your whole like career is signed to that one label. As far as my knowledge of the deal, it's a one album thing. And then it's a, it's a two year contract, so I have two years to finish it. Okay. But I'm I'm usually pretty fast about my projects, so. Right. It should it should be done quicker than expected. Right, and you've already started working on it. Yeah, it's actually it's pretty close to done. I think, maybe like one to three more songs, and okay. it'll be done. Okay. Dang. Uh, so, are you prepared to to drop the title of the album yet, or do you know that, or what? The, oh, like, what? I already I dropped the cover art and everything, and I dropped the name. It's gonna be called Four Eight O God. Oh, okay, <laughs> like, yeah, I saw that. Be, that used to be like my username back in like 
freshman year of high school because uh-huh. I thought because I rapped I was like that that's the area code so I thought I was like oh I'm the best rapper in Arizona or something like yeah, that yeah like, yeah something stupid like that so I just decided to name it that okay um so does like does it follow like a particular like storyline or pattern and talk about your like your childhood or something like that uh there's not really it's not really a storyline necessarily i'd say it's very like you look at the cover and it looks like it's supposed to be a happy album Uh but i'd say about like 90 percent of it's pretty like depressing (laughs) so like it kind of catches you off guard okay um but it's kind of, I guess, there's there's definitely storylines throughout it. Okay. But it's it doesn't really follow a formula necessarily. Okay. Yeah, your last few songs you sent me or the ones I've listened to have been uh, kind of on the sadder side, which is great. Yeah. I love that type of music, but... Um... Yeah, I've been kind of, I've been like messing with that a little bit because I, I used to have a really hard time like making music that expressed feelings. Right. So now I, I I don't know I've been on a roll of doing that. Yeah, um, yeah. There's a <laughs> there's that one record, man. I, I I we were talking about this before the uh, the interview, but yeah, the Don't Give Up record that's on your SoundCloud, that's pretty sad. Yeah, uh, I that was actually a real life story. So like that was based on someone I know. Okay. And so, yeah, I just, I felt really motivated to make that. I heard the beat and I was like, I just started writing to it. Okay. Yeah, I really love that record. So, yeah, if you're listening to this, I'm going to put it up on the channel soon. So you can check it out there. Thank Um, you. Yeah, that's, that might be my favorite record you've made, honestly. I I mean, I wasn't, I feel like the meaning's there, but I didn't know if the production and like, I don't, I didn't know if I sounded the best I could. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Um, I know the meaning is definitely there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you al- you always have the lyrical meaning in your in your in your stuff. So that's I'm not really worried about that at all. Um, yeah, that's that's a good record, man. And I know Thanks. I say, and I know I say that all the time, man. This is the best record you sent me. But it's crazy your development just over the past like probably like year and a half. I've known you. Um, it's been it's been crazy, man. So thank you. What do you what do you owe t- what do you owe your I guess musical development too over the past year and a half because we I've seen clear improvements since then. Uh, I don't know. I it's probably a combination of a, a bunch of things. I think mainly like, hang on, my cat is destroying the blinds. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all <laughs> yeah, good, he, man. It's crazy. Um, so mainly, I'd say main like this year. I feel like there's been a lot more conflict musically. Okay. Like, I've had a couple, I don't want to sound cliche, but I've had like a couple beefs with other rappers. A little, uh-huh. Nothing like, nothing like, oh, when I see you, it's hands on sight or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. But <laughs> I guess a lot of that has motivated me to like better my music. Just people like, I'll get random DMs of people like, oh, your music's trash. And I'll be like, well, now I have to go out and make a better song. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just feel like I have to one up myself all the time. Okay. Well, that's just good. The- that that keep that keeps you motivated, keeps you going. Yeah. Um, people will just literally message you out of the blue and say your, your music is terrible. It depends. Mostly on Instagram, what I get is like some random kid who just started their account. <laughs> that, I mean, this I don't take too seriously. Sometimes I'll randomly get a message like that, but like I'll randomly get a message. Someone will be like, "Oh, shout me out," because I have a decent amount of followers. Uh-huh. And I'm like, "Well, I don't really do shout outs or something like that." Yeah. And then they're just like, "Oh, your music's trash, anyway." So okay. Like, stuff, like <laughs> stupid stuff like that. And then on YouTube, I'll get stupid hate comments like that. So it's oh, kind of, yeah. it's kind of fun just to like motivate me. Yeah. In a way, and I don't take it too seriously. Of course. When not. I have other other rappers like that was uh what's his face tux god the guy that i was civil with who was signed to the label that now i think i think he ended his contract but like we had a big like week-long like beef i guess Uh so that that really motivated me to like get in the studio and be like this guy's trash i could out rap this guy or stuff (laughs) something stupid like that Uh uh-huh but yeah, it gets you it gets you motivated to keep making music, huh? 
Yeah, for sure. Okay. I think from day one, that's really been just the fact that people don't believe in it. Mm -hmm. And people want to call it trash and stuff. Like, yeah. I don't know. That's been my motivation since day one. Okay. For sure. All right. Uh, and how long have you been rapping for? Uh, since I was like nine for okay. fun. And okay. then in 2014, I put out my first track on SoundCloud. Okay. Didn't do too well at school. And that, <laughs> Didn't do too well. And that's what, like, like I said, like someone, it was just like a bunch of people just talking shit about it. I'm like, well, now I have to make another song. Like, yeah. I just, I stuck with it. So you put out that record and then how did people at school hear about it? You like showed it to him? No, I actually I didn't show anyone. Um, oh crap! Hang on, sorry. Uh, clicked on a YouTube notification. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I hate when those pop up. So I put the song out. I actually remember the exact day. I put the song out Halloween night. I think I recorded it the night before. My cousin was in it, who doesn't rap. <laughs> recorded it on my tablet. <laughs> My, like, Samsung Galaxy Tab 2 or something. Uh -huh. And so we waited till, like, midnight, no, I think midnight Halloween night and dropped it. Like, oh, this is going to blow up. <laughs> and then, like, no one talked about it for a month. I sent it to, like, maybe, like, random people, a few random people on Instagram because that's how I promoted back then. Uh -huh. And then, like, a month later, kids at my school start, like, stumbling upon it. <laughs> and then it was just like I think I think it was like the next two days after two days of that I like just logged on to the live I went to the library and logged on to SoundCloud in the computer lab and deleted it that day because oh, people man. Just, it was just like relentless jeez like people wouldn't stop yeah at least you were getting spins though yeah I think it got like 800 plays in a day like most of the school have heard <laughs> like what, like within the span of a day that's pretty good promotion man yeah i mean you, you should have done that again <laughs> yeah oh man that's a trip okay um so what so what encouraged you to keep going after all that uh, hate well like so the thing was like people after that i kind of just stopped and then people liked it as a joke and so they're like, oh, you need to keep dropping that. <laughs> and so, like, <laughs> I, just, I kept putting music out as, like, a joke. And then eventually it was, like, the, oh, so the first song I put out was Serious. And then after that, I started putting stuff out as a joke. Uh -huh. And then I got serious with it again. And people still hate on it every once in a while. But yeah, since then, it was kind of off and running. Okay. All right. Excellent. Um so yeah, it's still the same SoundCloud account that, that you made back then, or you create a whole new one? Um, well, actually, I made one for like promotional purposes. Uh huh. So like, I'll post like popular music that other artists upload mm -hmm. to gain followers and stuff. It actually, I think I put up a Lil Xan song. Uh huh. And I think it's like at one million something like plays. Oh wow! So that's like three hundred something followers at this point so i don't i don't really use that but i'll repost some of my music and stuff like that okay on there okay got it but my same account is still asap blake sean yeah uh it doesn't let you change the url right it does i just haven't changed it because like that's what everyone knows it by okay but i think i might change it for this album because i really haven't i haven't been using soundcloud like everything i put up is either is either like paid platforms or I put it up just on YouTube. Oh, so I think why I'm gonna is that? Change. Uh, just like, I feel like it's a hassle for like to upload every song to SoundCloud when it, I don't know. I, I prefer, I don't want to sound like a sellout, but I prefer to be paid for it. <laughs> like I, I like to oh. get a little something for it and SoundCloud hasn't really figured out a way to like monetize music and give it give artists the money right off of it so that's been my my main thing with it and it's just for the price you pay for the like pro account and everything mm -hmm. you might as well just put everything on itunes okay at that price uh okay because i i was paying like 200 bucks a year for the 
Pro Unlimited account, and I did one year of that, and I was like, well, I'm not going to renew that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't have Pro either, because um, I don't really I don't post songs there. I mean, I guess I could repost. Um, I started uploading this podcast to it, but I stopped because yeah, as a free member, I think you only get like two uploads or something like that. Yeah. So I've been I've been kind of saving room in a way for this album because the album needs to be on soundcloud for sure okay all right so what so you do you have like a standard membership now or you have the it's just the free membership so i think i have like i can upload like two hours more i think because i only have like four songs up at the moment right because i i deleted basically i deleted anything under a thousand so i just kept up the popular songs and then everything else is still on my youtube Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. All right. Excellent. So that's a pretty good strategy there. Um, so are there any new platforms that you like as far as um, music, finding music, uh, posting your music, listening to music? As far as like finding music, I do, I'd say I do that all on YouTube for the mm-hmm. most part. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes I'll make like playlists on Spotify just because it's easier because I don't have like YouTube Red or anything, so I can't just have it on in the background. Right. Uh, and then every once in a while, SoundCloud. What I actually have you heard of Reverb Nation? Yeah, is that a channel? Actually, uh, no, it's actually um, it's like it's basically SoundCloud, but you have unlimited uploads. Oh. And there's a there's a bunch of other things about it that are a little different but like i mainly i'll mainly upload to there and youtube and i just do that because it's it's unlimited uploads and then it connects directly to your twitter so like on there i have a lot more followers because it's connected directly to my twitter okay all right cool it's called reverb nation no i've never heard of it or used it before um it's kind of to my knowledge it's kind of dying out in a way really why? So I don't I don't use that as a main source. Um, I don't know. There used to be a lot of like big artists on it, but a lot of them left because of like they do like a ranking system. Uh huh. So you can be like ranked number one in your city. No, number one. Yeah, number one in your city. You can be ranked like in your state, and then in the country, and then in the world. So I guess the algorithm was like weird. Oh, and of course, the 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 main artists want to be treated like royalty everywhere they yeah, go. Yeah, so so like the bigger artists that were getting a bunch of plays weren't getting credit for that because someone on their iPad who was releasing music was higher ranked than them. Got it. I'm sure for they some were weird reason. Yeah. yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Man. So it kind of it's lost traction a lot. I think it was, I think it was way bigger back in like 2012 in that time frame okay so i think there's only like one million users so it's not super big okay yeah soundcloud's got to be way bigger yeah i mean that's got to be like the main place to go right for underground music yeah i i mean that or youtube i would say yeah soundcloud's probably better um i think i mean i just love the way soundcloud like pairs like artists like i can just go in there listen to a song and it's going to play like kind of similar sounding songs right after it and i think the way they do that is genius i don't know what algorithm they have going on but it's it's like flawless so that's oftentimes how i find music is i'll go on there listen to a song i like and then it'll just keep playing and playing um yeah I, i like that about soundcloud too i mean the reason I don't really use it as much is because it takes so much storage on my phone. The, it takes up like it takes the app takes up a bunch, mm-hmm. so I can't really just have it on my phone and be browsing. So I have to go and make a point to get on my computer to do it. Mm-hmm. So I haven't really been doing it as much, but it's definitely good to discover artists. On. For sure, for sure. Um, all right, cool. So we talked about your album coming up. Any other projects you're working on? Uh, I'm thinking the main thing? that's the main focus for sure. Okay. But I'm thinking I'll probably put out like maybe even a 10 song EP before that drops. Before that. Sure. Yeah. Wow. Either I'm going to either do that or I'm going to keep just putting out cause I've been probably 
putting out mm, two to three songs a month on YouTube, just quick, like, whether they're quick freestyles or stuff like that, I've been putting up a lot of videos. Uh-huh. So I'll either continue to do that or I'll put out an EP before the album. Okay. All right. Wow. So you be ma- you make a lot of music then. How much? How much? Mu- how many? How much do you record? Uh, the crazy thing is like, I don't. I don't think I record that much compared to like my friend. My friend, he's recording like. I think he puts out a new song like once a week. Mm-hmm. Um, I probably. I try to record like once a week, and I don't necessarily put it out right away. I'll either put it out like the day of that I record it or I'll wait like a week or so depending but I usually record once or maybe twice a week okay all right that's awesome um yeah and how long does it take typically to make a song uh it depends if I'm just doing like a quick remix to something uh like that could be like five to ten minutes if I'm just doing something not serious Mm mm-hmm um, but if I'm taking time to like really like take multiple takes and really mix it, uh, cl- close to like an hour. Okay. All right. That's good. And I think hopefully I'm going to start booking studio time soon and okay. actually do it outside of my house. So that'll, those sessions will probably take like two hours or so. Cause I want to make sure the quality is really high quality for sure. So what kind of equipment are you using now? Because I know you said you upgraded your software not too I, long ago. So I think I'm still on the same software and same mic as last time we talked. Okay, which is a what? It's, still, um, it's actually a USB microphone. It's really it's not the best microphone. I think it's like an Audio Technica something. Okay, but it's still so, solid. Yeah, I think with this new software, I'm able to mix it pretty professionally and then i use this program called lander it like uh, maps everything automatically oh really yeah you just drop in the music and then it masters it and you're supposed to pay for the service but uh i just create a new email account every time i need to do it okay so it's free it's okay. not supposed to be free but it is okay got it so you must have like a thousand emails <laughs> yeah i just well i don't it doesn't make the flaw in the system is it doesn't make you make a new email. Uh-huh. You can type in a fake email. Oh, <laughs> so that that's how I do it because I'm making like a new account, like once or twice a week. Right. Oh, so you can just put in any email. <laughs> that's a yeah, huge flaw. Just, yeah, I'm hopefully sure. Hopefully they don't. Hopefully they don't get insight on that. Yeah. Hopefully they don't listen to this. Change it. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, what they what they should have done is is they send it to the email address. They send the track to the email address instead of just... I think they they used to do that, but they changed it for whatever reason. Oh, okay. It used to be you had to get it in the email. Right. But now it's like you can make unlimited emails, and then it's like you get two songs. You get a two-song free trial. And then after that, it's like $9.99 a song. $10 a song? Uh, I think that might be if you want the wave file. Okay. I think for MP3 it might be like two ninety nine or something, but okay. if you want the highest quality, it's nine ninety nine. I think. Okay. Is wave typically better quality than MP3? Uh, people say they really like wave files, but I don't really get the hype behind it. Uh-huh. It's supposedly way better than MP3s, but okay. I I don't really hear the difference too much maybe when you put it into to a uh, mastering program or something you get more like depth in there and stuff you can mess I with. think I think probably yeah okay all right so we talked album we talked upcoming stuff I remember last time you had booked some shows um, are you still perf- doing some performances uh yeah I haven't I've done like maybe three shows this year so far i had a ton booked and then one fell through because i was sick and then i booked a show in albuquerque so like out of state Mm -hmm. and um that fell through because there's no way we're gonna be able to drive out there and be on a budget Uh (laughs) so um yeah the last show i did was saturday it was just like an open mic 
Uh-huh. And I did that with my friend Victor. Okay. Does he rap also? Yeah, he raps. All right. Cool. So are you going to be doing more shows throughout the summer? Yeah, I'm trying to definitely figure something out. I had a show offer for to open up for this SoundCloud artist. Uh, his name's Diego Money. Okay. I don't know if you've heard of him. No. Uh, he's he's pretty popular, but um, it's like pay to play. So I didn't, I don't know if I'm gonna run out of time to do it. But I'm just at the moment I don't want to pay to do that. Oh, but so they make might, you pay to to perform? Yeah, I think he he asked me for like a hundred bucks for a two song set or something like that. This guy Diego? No, the DJ who like books all the opening acts. Oh, okay, okay, I got it, I got it. So I mean. Is that common? Do artists typically have to yeah, pay to perform? Well, around here, for sure. Like, even, like, Afton that I use, that's still basically pay to play because you have to sell 20 tickets. Uh, but, I mean, but, like, yeah, I feel like if you're opening for bigger artists, they definitely, if it's a, if they're making a point to book opening artists, they usually charge. Really? Okay, I had yeah. no idea. And so I was thinking, like, I would book it and then get, like, a ton of, like, merchandise and, like, CDs and stuff and try to sell them. But I don't think, I don't think that's going to work. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many, like, sales I'll make, it, make at the show. And then it seems, at a certain point, it just seems kind of pointless. Right. I got it. Um, okay. But, so you've done a few performances. Which songs are your favorite to perform? Uh... Trying to, th I, I'd say "Goat" for sure. Uh -huh. Even though that's such, a, it's a terrible song. <laughs> it's, a, it's not high quality at all. But like, it gets the crowd going. Like we performed that with, um, it was me, my friend Paul, my friend Devin, and then James. Uh -huh. And James just went berserk. He was like <laughs> shaking his hair around and yeah, he's like jumping off stage. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. So that that's probably my favorite song perform, even though it's not the best quality song. Right. It just the beat is like it gets everyone going. Yeah. I was listening to that earlier. I can I see what you mean. There's a lot of energy behind it. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. So goat. All right. So um I guess the just wrapping up here, the last question I typically like to ask is do you have any advice for any up up and coming artists do you have any advice for people that are you know looking to put their music on soundcloud or you know try and make it in music do you have any advice for them uh i mean just stick with it really that's the main thing like that's really the main piece of advice any musician needs i feel like is just stick with it no matter what because really, the the quality will come. Like, you'll better yourself as you stick with it. Mm -hmm. So I think too many artists start out and have a bad song and then just quit. Because, I mean, it's pretty it's pretty easy to quit something that you're not great at at first and right. that people don't, people don't like. Right. So for sure, just stick with it. That's really the main piece of advice. No matter what equipment you have to work with, just keep going right yeah that's amazing i mean i th i believe this is something that they say on youtube a lot is that the quality comes through the quantity what yeah that, that means is the more you do it the more videos you make or the more songs you make the better it's going to be and you know you're yeah, exactly I've, right with that yeah i've definitely realized that to be true just going through it i mean you I, I, and not every song is going to be great or even one up the last song. Right. But eventually, if you keep doing it, it you're going to keep one upping the last song you put out, and it's just going to keep getting better. Right. All right. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show, Blake. Yeah, thanks for having you've me. Been, you've been great. Um, we'll definitely uh, look out for your album coming out this summer and your next your next shows. Yeah. Thank you. Just don't give up, just don't give up Please don't give up, please don't give up Don't you 
feels she's doomed to a miserable existence She feels she isn't valuable and isn't gifted So she sits and she just cuts on her wrist It's hard for her to feel how it's meant